Hey, you Sling Aircraft fans. I've made some modifications to my center console, both related to audio connections. The first modification is this new bracket that relocates and reorients the pilot and co-pilot headset connectors from the floor of the compartment to the rear end of the compartment. The second is this new bracket for the rear headset jack connections. Normally these headset jacks get mounted to a rib at the aft end of the passenger compartment just behind the rear passenger seat. I think this location is a little bit hard to access and when I think of most late model cars all those nice little controls are usually right in front of the passengers rather than behind them. So that's why I decided to design and create this little panel. The other benefit of having the rear headset jacks here is that I can run all the wiring to the center console now rather than have wiring going to three different places. In the rest of this video I'll show you how I made these two parts. This bracket is made out of 3D printed plastic while the bracket inside is made out of sheet aluminum that's been painted and then laser etched. It's two very different tool chains and processes to create them, so let's dive in. For the interior bracket, I start in Fusion 360 with a Z section, adding some blue keep out zones for both the jacks and the headphone plugs. After extruding it out to the basic shape, I then add a pattern on top where the holes will go for the connector jacks. After adding the graphics and a couple holes at the bottom, I'm ready to take this design and turn it into a flat pattern by using the unfold command in Fusion 360. This flat pattern then can be put onto a drawing and printed at one to one scale so that I can use the drawing as a template for cutting the design out of a sheet of aluminum stock using just a normal pair of aluminum shears. I use a press break and an angle finder to form the angles of the Z section, drill bits for the holes, and now this part is ready to paint. To create the laser etched graphics, I start with the same drawing that I created in Fusion 360 for cutting out the aluminum sheet, and I import it into a vector graphics tool called Inkscape. In this program, I can then create the text and lines and overlay them with the actual locations of the holes. Now I have a file that's ready to import into the next tool in the tool chain, which is called LaserWeb. This tool converts the line drawing into G-code commands which are interpreted by a CNC machine with a laser attached. I have to select which items I want etched, and then I specify parameters including the cut rate or how fast the laser moves, how much laser power to use, and then the application gives me a preview showing red lines which areas of the material will be etched away by the laser. After I carefully line up the panel on the CNC machine, I start the etching program and the laser starts burning away the top layer of paint, revealing the white paint underneath. The whole program just takes a few minutes to run, and after it's complete, I clean off the panel, and now it's ready to install into the console. For the rear audio panel, I again use Fusion 360 to create the design, but the buildup is a little bit different. I start with some primitive shapes like trapezoids to form the basic initial shape, then I add features like rounded edges, holes, and mounting ears for the screws that will hold this panel onto the center console. To ensure the audio jacks are going to fit properly inside the bracket, I create a simple stack cylinder structure which represents the dimensions of the jack. Looks like it's going to fit okay, so this part is now ready to print. I export the design from Fusion 360 in STL format and then import it in the next tool in my tool chain called Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D is called a slicer because it takes the solid design and then slices it into tiny little layers that will be interpreted by the 3D printer to build up the pattern one layer at a time. Once I'm satisfied with the preview, I send the program off to the 3D printer and it starts building up the part one layer at a time. I also include instructions to print some support structure, those crisscrossy things underneath, to support the features that overhang the edges. After a few hours, the printing is complete, and this part will be ready to install after I remove the support material on the bottom side. Well, that's all for this segment. Follow my progress on this YouTube channel and also on my website, slingforward.jetshine.net. Thanks for watching.